Whoa, no way. Have you ever tried to lock your car with your key fob and it wouldn't lock? Or maybe you're in a rush and you locked it and you didn't even look back to see if it had locked. What if someone had intercepted your key fob signal preventing your car from locking? They can go and open your car and steal the stuff from inside your car. Like that nice 7100 radio in there. Now this sort of attack is surprisingly easy to do with pretty rudimentary radio gear like this little Quan Sheng radio here that costs about 15 to 20 quid. Now of course this is super illegal to do but if they're gonna break into your car they don't really care about radio laws do they? Essentially what someone with ill intentions could do is transmit a signal from a little radio like this on a similar or the same frequency as your key fob thus completely blocking your car from receiving the key fob signal. So let's try and grab the frequency from my Audi's key fob. I've got the Quan Sheng in spectrum scan mode. I'm just gonna hold the key fob down here somewhere and basically just press it and let's grab the frequency. There we go, 434425, that's the one we want. So the Quan Sheng's set to that frequency and you can hear the key fob emitting its radio signal. Now, if we go outside to my car and we transmit on the radio, it's in Vox mode, so it's picking up my voice and transmitting, we can't do anything with the car because it is being jammed by this Quan Sheng. Now it's not transmitting, I can lock and unlock the car normally. And the reason that works is because little radios like this put out way more power than your key fob, so it just completely obliterates the signal and stops it from working. So what we're looking at here is the area of radio spectrum where all the key fobs live. There's so many signals coming and going, just completely churning. And at this time of day, it's sort of like in the, in the kind of mid morning, there's loads of activity, people going to work, school runs. There's other stuff in this band as well, like kind of um, remote gates and access systems, but you can see how busy it is. Now I can see all these signals really clearly because I've got a very directional antenna pointing towards my local town. But these nefarious characters, they could be in your local car park. Now if you've not been aware of this sort of stuff before, this could be a bit of an eye opener. But if you are aware of this sort of stuff, you'll know about devices like this, the Flipper Zero. It's not just a cute Tamagotchi. These things can jam signals as well. Again, highly illegal, but not as effectively as an actual high power radio. It can do other stuff though, like replay attacks. So essentially what a replay attack is basically storing or recording the signal from a key fob like that, and then replaying it back on the same frequency to the car in the hopes that it will open. So while simple replay attacks can work, they usually work on the older cars where they don't have rolling codes. So on more modern cars, but not the newest cars, they will have rolling codes. So every time you hit the button on the key fob, it will increment to the next code. That makes it difficult to do replay attacks on those cars. That's a good thing. Now, there is another attack which you've probably heard about. This is called a relay attack. So what we're seeing here is a group basically turning up and they're gonna try and nick this car from the front of this house, this driveway here. And this is quite a common one. It's been around quite a long time. It's quite easy to do with the right equipment. So you see this guy is basically just walking up with this box in his hand. First thing he goes and does is, is kind of pull the handles on the car. So what he's trying to do here is trigger a challenge from the car, which is basically a signal from the car that is looking for the key fob. Now of course the key fob's inside the house, so there's no way the car's gonna open, but it does, because if we skim the footage back a little bit and have a look, the second guy here you see waving an antenna around outside the front of the house. He's looking for a signal from the key fob, and that signal will be a response from the key fob to the challenge that was originally sent from the car. Now the device that these guys are using is simply like a Wi-Fi repeater. All it's doing is bridging the gap between the key fob inside the house and the car outside. Now our delightful character is sitting inside the poor person's car that he's about to steal, he's not gonna be able to start it because there's likely gonna to need to be a second challenge response from the key fob. So that's what the second guy's standing at the window again, trying to get a signal from the key fob. Then he finally manages to do it, the car's started, and unfortunately they were successful. Now that sort of thing is generally something you wanna be worried about, especially if you've got a car that automatically unlocks the doors when you come near to the car, as in like it's detecting your key fob when you walk up to the car, that's why it's unlocking. So it's become pretty trivial for organized car thieves to actually carry out this attack very, very quickly and steal your pride and joy. So let's test this theory out on my own car, my Audi TT, and see how vulnerable that is. 
Now, because my car doesn't unlock automatically when I walk up to it, there's no way you can trigger any communication with a key fob. So normally with some cars, you can trigger an authentication by pulling the handle in like this, and then it will try and communicate with the key. But you can see here, absolutely nothing happens. There's no signal on this tiny SA at all. So that's at least one refreshing thing about my car. There's no way they can do that first challenge response thing by pulling the handles and basically opening the door. They'd have to find another way to get into the car, maybe smash the window, the alarm's gonna go off. But what if they could get around all of that with the second challenge response to actually start the car work? Let's find out. Right, so I'm sitting in my car right now. I've got my tiny SA spectrum analyzer here, scanning from 400 megahertz to 500 megahertz, which is gonna be the range of this key fob. I've previously tested it, so I do know that it is. Um, so we're gonna lock the car, because it's already unlocked at the moment. Lock the car, and you can see the signal from the key fob there. That's the signal there. Car is locked. Um, I better not move too much, because the alarm will probably go off. So now, I will unlock the car. So there's your signal there for, again. So the car is now unlocked. Now, to start this car, this key has to be in the car somewhere. So there's a communication between the car and the key when you hit the start stop button. So if we hit the start stop button here, you should see something on this spectrum analyzer, but we don't because I, I think this is actually running a bit too slow to catch it. But we can keep trying and see if we can actually catch it. There you go. So I didn't press anything on this key fob. The car is communicating with the key fob when I push the stop start button. And we can actually confirm that because if we look at the key fob here, when you press the start stop button, did you see the LED light up on the key fob? So that's your communication between the key and the car which of course is to confirm that the key fob is in the car. So my car is vulnerable to the second part of the attack, but they'd have to get in it first and get around the alarm system and everything else. There has also been advances in rolling code technology, you know, for the replay attack. So I wouldn't rule out that this car could not be stolen at all. And of course, if someone was to employ the same tactic that we used right at the beginning of the video to just jam the signal so the car couldn't be locked, then that's half of their job done. All they'd have to do is sniff around outside the house with their repeater system and conduct the second part of the attack, which of course would allow the car to be started and driven away. And most of these cars will just carry on going until they're actually turned off. Then they won't start again, obviously, because you know there's no key. And if you think you're safe from this because you've got a new car that uses Bluetooth and an app to open the car, think again, because there's now Bluetooth repeaters that do basically the same thing as this. Same principle, but it just uses Bluetooth. I don't think you're ever gonna be completely safe. So what can you do? Well, firstly, I'd be making sure that my key fob isn't anywhere near the outside of the house. Ideally, store it in a metal box inside the house so it can't be penetrated from signals coming in. There are Faraday pouches as well out there. I don't know of the effectiveness of these because I haven't tested them. In theory, they should work. The best way to test this would be to sit in the car with the key fob in the pouch and see if it actually does anything. Some of these might just be marketed as Faraday pouches to, to be able to command the extra premium. The other thing, of course, to do, if your car does allow you to turn off, um, you know, automatic entry, that sort of thing, you can turn that feature off. That will help a lot. Also, you could go to the extreme of removing the battery from the key fob. That's going to, you know, stop that problem from happening straight away. Um, but I have heard that there are some cars where you can actually disable the key fob as well. So temporarily disabling the key fob. I think it's like a factory setting to stop the batteries from flattening um, whilst it's in storage. And lastly, I suppose just be mindful when you actually push the button on your car, has your car actually locked? Hope you enjoyed this one guys. Catch you next time.